when preparing to add a lead to an existing system, oftentimes a peripheral venogram is performed and this suggests that the vein is occluded, as in this case, with um, extensive collateral formation. So the initial impression is that the vein is occluded and maybe we should just go to the other side. What we've learned is that uh, oftentimes the peripheral venogram and any other mechanism or means by which to judge whether the vein is open or not, such as ultrasound or CAT scan, uh, overestimates the severity of the problem. So in the case that we just illustrated, uh, access is obtained peripheral to the site of occlusion, and it's important to obtain the access peripheral to the site of occlusion uh, and this is more easily done uh, if the vein is entered while contrast is flowing to take advantage of the venous distension provided by injection of contrast and saline into the IV. Uh, once access is obtained, a small uh, catheter, such as the uh, five French catheter associated with a micropuncture system, can be uh, placed proximal to the site of occlusion, peripheral I think is a better word, peripheral to the site of occlusion, in contrast injected utilizing a Y adapter um, to see what the situation is. And what I think you'll find is that a what I refer to as a local venogram or injection uh, of contrast at the site of occlusion or obstruction will often reveal uh, an opening. Then, uh, using this injection system with a Y adapter, a wire can be advanced uh, through the hemostatic valve and a torque device used uh, to direct the wire through the occlusion, as is illustrated here. Once the wire is through the occlusion, um, then uh, a sheath can usually be advanced, exchanged for an Amplatz wire, um, and venoplasty performed if necessary. In some cases, uh, you can even do this without venoplasty. But I think it's important to understand that the peripheral venogram always overestimates the severity of stenosis, um, and I think you'll find that